Hey, this is Chris Swift, missionary to Belgium. Thank you for being interviewed. Just have a few questions here. How did you know that God was calling you into missionary service? Actually, the first moment that I realized I was being called was when I was challenged at a meeting in which the speaker spoke about world missions. And I was uninvited with many others to come to the altar and to just to give my life in case God called me to be a missionary. I didn't feel at that time that I was being called. And I went to the altar and I said, God, if, if that's one of the things that you want me to do or if that's what you call me to, I'm willing to listen. And when I left that service, I still didn't know that I was called, but I had a growing sense month after month and year after year that I needed to go into ministry and to serve God full time. I was in the military at the time. And gradually, as I entered into the ministry, I began to realize that I might eventually be called to be a missionary. But I just continued to do my ministry, to do pastoral work, to do evangelistic work. And then finally, I was called into ministry in, in the mission field. What advice would you give to somebody who's preparing for missionary service? The best advice that I can give to anyone preparing for any kind of ministry is just to do it. Uh, to just do what God calls you to do, uh, to find a, a good pastor, a good church, and to serve there in whatever ministries God gifts you to do, whatever anointing God gives you, just to be a good Christian and a good minister in whatever field God uses you in, like teaching. Uh, years before I became a missionary, I, I was gifted in the area of teaching, and God gave me that anointing and helped me to develop it. I went to seminary. And so I just developed in whatever giftings God gave me until he called me. Share an experience that's unique to the country that God has called you to minister in. Probably one of the most unique things about Belgium is that they speak three languages. Dutch in the north, French in the south, and German in the east. And I went to a church in the northern part of Belgium in Flanders that's French speaking. And the pastor, being from Africa, does not speak very much Dutch. And so when I arrived there, I prepared my sermon in French, and I was going to deliver the sermon in French. And he said, Brother Swift, uh, my Dutch is so poor. He said, would you mind translating your own sermon into Dutch as you preach in French? And so for the first time in my life, I had to preach in French and Dutch at the same time. It was quite an experience, but God's Spirit gave me the grace and power to do so. Given your unique perspective as a missionary who's traveled abroad, what advice would you give to the church in America? The best advice that I can give to the church in America is just to answer the Great Commission wherever you are. Whatever you're doing in the local church, keep on doing it. But one of the secrets of church growth I have found anywhere in the world is just having a close relationship with God. When I arrived in Belgium in 1996, the church there had only been operating for about uh, 11 years, and they had already grown from two churches to 16. The church in Brussels had grown from 25 members to 2,000. And I asked the, the pastor and the bishop of our work in Belgium, I said, what is the secret of your church growth? Because in seminary, I read books about three steps to church, church growth, or five keys, or 10 secrets. And he smiled and he said, I wouldn't know how to call such a book because I did not write such a book and I cannot write it. The book has been written by the Holy Spirit. All I can say is that here, our part is just to do a lot of praying and fasting. It's not my talent, it's not my gifts, but it's the power of the Holy Spirit. And we spend a lot of time praying and fasting and seeking that power. Okay, that concludes my interview. Uh, maybe you'd wanna just uh, share a word to Cooper City. I want to thank the Cooper City Church of God for being such a loving church. First of all, for loving God, and then for loving each other and, and loving the missionaries who come here. This church has been so characterized by love. And every missionary that I know that's come here has been touched by your love. It starts with your pastor and with your staff, but every one of the members of this church have really shown me tremendous love and I thank you for that. And I keep thinking of that scripture where God says they'll know we are Christians by our love. I just want to encourage you, just keep on loving. Love God, love your pastor, love each other, 
and love the world. And we'll love you right back. Amen. Amen. Chris, I love you.